This video is supported by Brilliant.org. SpaceX recently has launched its second fleet of 60 Starlink satellites. The launch was a tremendous success. But unbeknownst to most of us, SpaceX is now in a precarious position whereas launching more satellites at a rapid pace may face international criticism of it being ignorant to the negative consequences. But not doing so would confuse SpaceX investors who have put billions of dollars in this operation. Let me elaborate on this. You see, what Starlink is about to do is quite unprecedented. 40,000 satellites in the sky is more than anything we have seen before. One of the defining features of those 40,000 satellites is their low altitude. This enables them to reach the Earth much easier with shorter latency, ensures the quality of Starlink services. However, this also creates problems for astronomers, those who are frustrated spotting Starlink satellites instead of stargazing. Though Elon dismissed the visibility of Starlink satellites as negligible, he followed up instructing teams at SpaceX to look into the albedo problems before it becomes a major issue. According to National Geographic, the latest report indicate that the Starlink satellites spend most of their time around magnitude 5, possibly as faint as magnitude 7. On the magnitude scale, that the bigger the number, the fainter the light. In other words, Starlink satellites will be visible if Elon Musk doesn't do anything about it. This has never happened before. From time to time, satellites have been spotted in the sky, but never in formations, not to mention the eventual 40,000 of them. This is an ethical gray area where there is no rule against SpaceX operations, but people's sentiment against it is legitimate. This is the first issue, especially considering the huge size of Starlink satellite fleet. The second problem arises from the fear of collision. A European satellite that measures the Earth wind using lasers had a close encounter with one of SpaceX Starlink constellation two months ago in a situation that illustrates the growing inadequacy of existing systems for global coordination and orbital issues. And as ESA explained, these maneuvers are actually very common, but they're almost always to avoid debris and dead satellites, not active ones. This causes concern over the higher possibility of collision were SpaceX to launch all of its 40,000 satellites in the next decade. Further considering the chain effect of a space collision where debris from one collision sets out more collisions in sequences, we should take this problem very seriously. Again, the huge Starlink fleet size increasing total satellites in space tenfold is not to be dismissed easily. Thirdly, while there is no international law against SpaceX launching its satellites, we have to consider its business repercussions. If 40,000 SpaceX satellites were permitted to launch, what is there to prevent the Chinese from doing the same? How about ESA, the Russians and the Indians? If Starlink satellite constellation is justified to orbit Earth, there will be no stopping other countries from doing the same. 40,000 Starlink satellites, 40,000 Chinese satellites, 40,000 European satellites, so on and so forth. We have not even started to consider the plans of private companies such as OneWeb and Blue Origin. This is not a sensible possibility going forward, as the space is already crowded. But what could be the best alternative? Starlink is critical for SpaceX survival and Elon's goal of getting to Mars. In a recent episode, I've explained Starlink's critical role in financing SpaceX new starships and Mars trips. It is evident, at least to analysts at Morgan Stanley, that SpaceX's 120 billion valuation in 2040 depended on a successful Starlink project. But more importantly, SpaceX has promised its investors of a successful Starlink. I mean, Google's 1 billion cash injection to SpaceX in 2015, at a time when SpaceX's launch record was very weak, was not charity. Google expected SpaceX to keep its promises, and Elon must duly follow through. Starlink's success is also crucial to Mars plans where huge profits is needed to build bigger and better rockets. It is the only way to get it funded. This is the precarious position SpaceX is in balancing investor and financial objectives with legitimate ethical and safety concerns. More importantly, all are happening in an uncharted territory. SpaceX could make the decision to slow down the launch cadence to make sure there's no negative effects of Starlink. But there's no rule that blames SpaceX for not doing so. So what could Elon do? Well, there are obvious solutions to mitigate certain problems. There are also unsolvable problems in my opinion. For example, the light pollution problem could be mitigated by using different materials for satellite services to reduce albedo. Elon has instructed his team to work on it. There might be a solution soon. As for the collision problem, 
Maneuvering in space will be a necessity in the future, so it is rather a sign of progress in my opinion. However, the proliferation problem will be hard to solve as it concerns internet infrastructure and national security. Now that the Chinese saw what US has done to Huawei, it is very possible that such a huge constellation of satellites over their airspace will be met with similar resistance, perhaps a fleet of satellites providing competing services. In terms of capability, China is still many years behind, but should the commercial value of Starlink be proven, Chinese innovators will quickly catch up considering China's superior space capability, second in the world in my opinion. For those of you who are not convinced of the Chinese capability, let me just present two pieces of evidence to counter any skepticism. First, the Chinese Beidou Global Positioning System, and second, China's successful rovers on the moon. The most curious reality about the Starlink experience is the confusion of accountability and oversight. We can talk about SpaceX moral responsibility all we want, it is, at the end of the day, responsible to its shareholders and customers first of all. Therefore, Starlink must and will be pursued. But the concerns with light pollution, space junk and satellite proliferation is nevertheless a legitimate one. We probably need more international cooperation to solve this issue, especially important is to involve the Chinese. Starlink satellites in the sky at an unprecedented number would inevitably result in problems that we have not seen before such as light pollution and possible collision. But the answer to progress should be more progress, not regression. We should strive to use smart engineering solutions to solve those problems rather than abandoning Starlink. That's why I'm recommending Brilliant.org. Brilliant is a great tool to get you start learning. It has over 60 in-depth courses in math, science, and computer science. Courses on Brilliant give you a good framework to enhance your understanding of rocketry and help you link relevant physics topics together. On top of that, it also engages you with interesting problems and examples, help you master concepts by solving fun, challenging problems yourself. The course on classical mechanics, for example, is very relevant for today's topic. It teaches you the principles of rocketry with over 700 interactive concepts and exercises. To support Curious Elephant and learn more about Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash Curious Elephant and sign up for free. First 200 people click on the link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription.